GLN's special coverage of the 2013 presidential inauguration. I'm Eric Halperin. And I'm Matt Lee. We will be providing live coverage of President Obama's public swearing-in ceremony and address. President Obama was re-elected last November and will be taking his oath of office today at noon. More than 800,000 people are expected to be celebrating the inauguration at the National Mall in Washington, D.C. President Obama will be sworn in by Chief Justice John Roberts and accompanied by First Lady Michelle Obama and his two daughters, Sasha and Malia. We have four reporters who are in Washington, D.C. covering the inauguration right now. Our Meredith Kelly spoke to the people in D.C. to find out what they expect for President Obama's inauguration. Yes! The Capitol is gearing up for this inaugural event, starting with Obama being sworn in at 11.30, followed by his speech, then the parade from the Capitol to the White House, and later that night, the inaugural ball. The atmosphere around here is full of excitement as people join in all around the country to celebrate in this historic event. Gates are already up and streets are closed to cars, but that doesn't deter people's enthusiasm. Johanna Clark, an Arizona native, explains what she thinks the inauguration will be like. A lot of excitement, some confusion, lots of crowds, but I think everyone's really excited for this event. There is a lot of anticipation surrounding the inaugural events. There are also expectations set for President Obama's next four years. I think he's going to lay out a pretty strong vision for a second term. Um, Hopefully he'll lay out some of his loftier ambitions, given that he's not going to be trying to run for re-election. So I'm excited to see what he chooses to address, especially in light of the gun control debate and the use of his executive order. So I'm just really excited to see what his vision for the second term is. Johanna isn't the only one appreciating the event. The Sanders sisters of Nashville, Tennessee, gave us a preview of what they would sing if they were ever to meet President Obama. In Washington, D.C., Meredith Kelly, Elon Local News. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. gave his famous I Have a Dream speech in front of the Lincoln Memorial in August of 1963. Nearly 50 years later and a few blocks away, President Obama will be once again be making history as the first African-American president being re-elected into office on a day commemorating MLK and his contributions to the civil rights movement. Both men have been avid supporters and pioneers for civil liberties and human rights. Even though the main inaugural ceremony will be held at the Capitol, yesterday there was a private swearing-in ceremony in the Blue Room of the White House. Because of closed courts and other public institutions, inaugural ceremonies usually aren't celebrated on Sundays. However, in order to comply with the U.S. Constitution, both the President and Vice President had to be sworn in yesterday. A dozen of President Obama's family members were present at the event. The President was sworn in by Chief Justice John Roberts. Roberts' wife Jane also attended the ceremony. And President Obama wasn't the only person sworn in yesterday. Vice President Joe Biden also had a private swearing-in ceremony yesterday morning. He took his oath of office at the United States Naval Observatory. The Vice President was sworn in by Ju Supreme Court Justice Sonia Sotomayor. Several politicians attended the event, including Pennsylvania Senator Bob Casey, Attorney General Eric Holder. In 2009, 1.8 million people were present at the inauguration in Washington, D.C. In a CNN poll, the majority of Americans thought President Obama represented a positive form of democratic change for the country. Four years later, instead of the inauguration being celebrated by both parties, Obama voters are projected to be the only supporters present at the festivities in D.C. The decrease in excitement may be attributed to the dissatisfaction of President Obama's performance in his previous term. And some of today's most popular musical artists have been performing at the inaugural ceremonies all weekend. Katy Perry performed at the Kids Inaugural Ball where she sang her famous Teenage Dream hit. Other big artists who have performed this past weekend are Fun, Far East Movement, Mindless Behavior, and Usher. At the public inauguration today, Kelly Clarkson will sing My Country Tis of Thee, Beyonce will perform the national anthem, and James Taylor will sing America the Beautiful. The Grambling State Marching Band of Louisiana belted tunes in the National Mall last night. They are one of the many marching bands who are scheduled to perform for the President's Inauguration Parade. Grambling State University is a historically black college and famous for their music department and marching band. And you could say one band will be marching down Pennsylvania Avenue with pride. The Gay and Lesbian Band Association will be performing during the inaugural parade. In 2009, the band was the first gay and lesbian group to ever perform at the inaugural parade. They will be among several other marching bands at the inaugural parade, including military and school bands. 
So it sounds like a lot of fun's gonna be happening, especially with all the music and excitement going on. It's gonna be fun to be there for our reporters. I think it's, especially for our reporters, it will be a good time, something that I don't know if they've seen before, but it's, it's interesting how Beyonce performed four years ago at the inauguration, she's performing today, and then in two weeks she's performing at the Super Bowl. She's really getting her name out there. Yeah, I, I don't know if I'd wanna be Beyonce right now, going from president to Super Bowl to wherever she's going next all over America. Yeah, I mean, it's probably good for her publicity, though, when, when you think about it. Probably. And I think Obama is a big fan of Beyonce. I mean, clearly, if she's been, she was the last one she was there today, I'd say so. Yeah. Yesterday morning, President Obama and Vice President Biden laid a wreath at Arlington National Cemetery in Washington, D.C. They made the trip after Biden was sworn in and shortly before the president attended his own private swearing in. They laid a wreath at the tomb of the unknown soldier and stood in silence as taps was played. President Obama selected the Hispanic American poet Richard Blanco to recite a poem at the inauguration. The theme of his poem is unity. Blanco is the first openly gay poet to speak at the inauguration. Breaking news, President Obama is being sworn in right now. Let's take a look.
circumcision of temporal authority. No evidence of tongues should have been there. But all that a tribal guild can be cured through governmental right. Our celebration of the mystery of enterprise. Our insistence on hard work and personal responsibility. These are constant in our church. We have always understood that when times change, so must we. But fidelity to our founding principles requires new response to new challenges. The preserving our individual freedom ultimately requires collective action. For the American people to no more meet the demands of today's world by acting alone than the American soldiers could have met the force of the statues of the communists with muskets and militias. No single person can train all the math and science teachers we'll need to teach our children for the future. We'll build the roads and networks and research labs that will bring new jobs and businesses to our shores. Math, more than ever, we must see these things together as one man and one people. by crises that sealed our resolve and proved our resilience. The decade of war is not that decade. An economic recovery has begun. America's possibilities are limitless, for we possess all the guidance that this world with our boundaries demands. Youth and drive, diversity, openness, an endless capacity for risk and addition for reinvention. Our fellow Americans, we are made for this moment, and we will seize it so long as we seize it together. For we, the people, understand that our country cannot succeed when its greatest very well like there are the many failing nations. We believe that America is primarily going to have to rest upon the broad shoulders of the rising middle class. We know that America thrives when every person can find independence and pride in their work. And the world is divided toward the liberal establishment and toward the marxist. We are true to our creeds and liberal toward any perceived implied desire to feel the same thing as perceives anybody else because she is an American, she is free, and she is equal, not just in the eyes of God, but also in our own. We understand that ongoing programs are inadequate to the needs of our country. And we must harness new ideas and technology to remake our government, revamp our tax code, reform our schools, and empower our citizens with the skills they need to work harder, learn more, and reach higher. But while the means will change, our social endures. The nation will reward the effort and determination of every single American. That is what this moment requires. That is what will give real meaning to our freedom. We, the people, still believe that every citizen deserves a basic measure of security and dignity. We must make the hard choices to reduce the cost of health care and the size of our government. Them in the generation that will build the future. For we remember the lessons of our past. Twenty odd years were spent in poverty. Parents and spouse with a disability had nowhere to turn. We do not believe that in this country freedom is reserved for the lucky, but happiness for the few. We recognize that no matter how responsibly we live our lives, any one of us can easily make a basic decision. 
Uganda in the tenth minute. Their arms swept away in a terrible storm. It's a match of three men to each other. He meditated, meditated, spoke a prayer. He finished not to die for our nation and for the defense of our country. They do not mention a nation of Hitler so to free that and to take it away from us would make the country great again.
Bowl a couple years ago. Our journey is not complete until our wives, our mothers, our daughters, the men and women you know today are here. Our journey is not complete until our young brothers and sisters are treated like anyone else under the law. For if we are truly created equal, then surely the love we commit to one another must be equal as well. So something that 
he stressed a lot in his speech today, almost similar to back in 1963 when Martin Luther King had his I Have a Dream speech. Martin Luther King was, I have a dream, I have a dream. Today it seemed like there's a lot from a lot of we the people, we the people and togetherness from Obama. Yeah, it definitely represented kind of the whole chain from Martin Luther King to President Obama. And I thought something that was interesting is President Obama is talking a lot about what he's going to do in this term, how he's going to raise tax for the wealthy, um, move to sustainable energy, and stop the perpetual war that keeps occurring. So I think we got an interesting preview, and he definitely excited the crowd. You heard the crowd was really into it and was excited with what was going on and seemed to support his yeah, views. Like, I mean, like I was saying with uh, the whole togetherness thing, I think Obama is really going to try and up the middle class. And I yeah. think that's, that's a big part of what he was saying. Everyone have equal opportunities. And he wants, you know, that little girl, no matter how she was born, she wants her to have equal opportunities um, as everyone else. And that togetherness theme was definitely big. And I think there was definitely some parallels between that and MLK um, back in the early 1960s. Yeah, especially since President Obama is talking about being a champion for the poor and marginalized and helping out those who are disenfranchised, kind of like Martin Luther King Jr. back in 1963. So there was a lot of similar parallels between the two. Yeah, and then something obviously that MLK wouldn't have had to address back in 1963, but Obama is addressing today, um, was about getting troops out of Afghanistan and, and getting troops out of Iraq. So we have our own Naima Abdullahi is in Washington, D.C. We're going to toss to her and see what the scene is like in D.C. right now. I am here in the state capitol, Washington, D.C. President Barack Obama just came. She thousands and thousands of people were waving their flags in the air. And there's different generations of people here, little kids, grandparents, people from many different ethnicities. There's a sense of pride and patriotism that is shared and resonates through the entire crowd. This is a very exciting experience. I'm here right now, and we are seeing a lot of people wearing different President Obama hoodies and hats and carrying magazines and different memorabilia. And I have spoken to a few people from different political affiliations, but today is a day to celebrate being a citizen of the United States and experiencing this very historic moment. Now we have our social media guy here with Gary. What's going on? Well, on there's Twitter? there's so much going on on Twitter, so much going on in social media. Um, it's really, really amazing, actually, how many tweets are coming in. Uh, we got one from Andrea Mitchell a couple hours ago, and she was tweeting that she was walking out to the platform position that she got to be on through the same door as the President of the United States. How cool is that? So it really shows, you know, like the even Andrea Mitchell, an experienced reporter, does get awestruck at these types of events. And really, the people on the presidential platform really is a who's who of politics and reporters. Uh, Bob Schieffer was up there. You know, former presidents were up there. Um, and it was really interesting to see who was, who was there next to him. Uh, the first lady of the United States, Michelle Obama, uh, just got a Twitter account just recently. And so she just tweeted from where she was, honored and blessed to be joining so many of my fellow Americans gathered to watch the inauguration. And she signed it Mo, and that's just like Barack Obama signs his tweet, Bo. Another tweet, uh, Cory Booker is there, the mayor of Newark, New Jersey. He is there at the inauguration. And they t NBC News tweeted that the National Mall is full and closed. So the people that wanted to go see the rest of the speech uh, had to go to the Washington Monument to see it which I thought was very interesting. There was, it was so many people there, hundreds of thousands of people there watching Barack Obama's speech. Um, and something he said, Barack Obama said, a decade, a decade of war is now ending. And I was just looking at the hashtag Inaug 2013, and that's one of the most tweeted quotes from the speech that we just heard. A uh, decade of war is now ending. It really got people pumped up, excited, and really feeling how, how good everybody is about being an American. I think it's interesting that you bring up the whole decade of war thing, and with that tweeting, um, a lot of, like, 10 years ago, it was, it was our generation that they were kids. They didn't, and they, all they knew is that America was going into war. Mm -hmm. And now it's crazy that it's been 10 years later, and I, I think that maybe that's why it's such a popular hashtag right now, is because yeah. those are the people that are on social media all the Absolutely, time. Absolutely, right yeah. Now. And I think another thing is he's excited to move forward and start the economic recovery, which he sounded excited to have. So that was an exciting adventure, listening to a monumental speech from President Obama, similar to what happened in 1963.
Thank you for tuning in. I'm Matt Lee. And I'm Eric Halperin. And I'm Gary Grumbach. Thank you for tuning in. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter, Elon Local News. Have a good day.